Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for the 5% series for Game Week 11 where I hope to help you finish in the top 5% globally for FPL which means you should do okay in your mini leagues. As we go through this video you'll see different players on different card backgrounds. Most of the players are white which means they're fine to have to keep if you want to sell them that's up to you but there are six other colours you may see. A yellow card is a new player introduced into the system this week. So this is a system with a finite number of players. There's 60 odd players out of the maybe 700 available. I'll get to that in a minute. Green means it's a good buy and that's allowing for what the overall ownership is, what the upcoming fixture is and the upcoming fixtures. So there might be some players that aren't green that do have a very good game week this game week but the next two or three aren't so good. Conversely, they may have a bad fixture this week but good in a few weeks time they tend to be not green so green means taking everything to account that i can i think they're a good buy they're worth buying this week not necessarily for a minus four but if you're playing your wild card or you just want to change a player around green and yellow generally are okay to get gray players are bench fodder they're cheap and we buy those so that we've got more money to spend on our main 11 Try not to have more than three grey players. You don't have to have any if you don't want to. Blue players are sellable soon, so they're okay to have at the moment, but expect us to be moving them on soon, which means if you're wildcarding or bringing players in, you probably don't want a blue player. Orange are sellable. If you've got these, it's okay to move them on, and a red is sell now. We're taking them out of the system. So I got a message from or rather a comment from John Hamilton 7762. Mr. Mule, this is too complicated. You should just do a colour coded combination of buy, keep, sell, avoid, optional, must have, etc. Similar to Dan or Oscar. You lose me each week on this. And then Jamal Matty 439 very kindly replied to that. His method is unique. I wouldn't have him change it. It's simple. Get as many, get as much greens as possible. So if you're unfamiliar, this is FPL mate, that's Dan. He does a very good entertaining video every week where he does a buy, a keep, a sell, a avoid. He used to do two for each category. He recently changed it to four and that's just his opinion on what you should do. Of course he doesn't always get it right but it's still very entertaining, interesting. This is FPL Focal, that's Oscar. That isn't Oscar, I think that's Simicast. The video is from Oscar. <laughs> And he, again, like many content creators, go through and talk a bit about the various players. Now, this series is different to those series. What I find other content creators do, which is great, very entertaining, it's all good to watch, is they talk about various players, say the pros and cons. They'll often look at the stats, the underlying stats to do with expected goal involvement and where they're going on the pitch, expected minutes, etc., etc. And you could watch loads of these videos, and at the end of it, you might be... Okay, but what should I do? <laughs> should I buy Madison or Saka? Should I be selling them? Which keeper should I be playing? Who should be my captain? And I've known people over the years that want to play FPL because maybe for work or friends, etc. They just don't have time to be looking at all these content creators. And if they do look at them all, at the end, they're still thinking, okay, but what am I supposed to do? So the idea of this is I've got a small selection of players in this system and you can pretty much choose any combination of players and you'll do all right and hopefully finish top 5%. The colours are simply to guide you to get a little bit higher. So the greys, you only get three of those at maximum. And I'm advising the green players, they're going to be good. But if you don't want to buy the green players, that's fine. If you want to make no subs, that's fine. If you want to do your own thing, of course, that's fine as well. But the idea is you can kind of do anything with these players and you should basically be all right, I hope that makes sense. All right, let's start by looking at what happened in game week 10 and then what the suggestions are for game week 11. We'll start by whizzing through the scores for game week 10 for the players that are in this system. Of the main goalkeepers, if you had one of these, that was an average of 3.6 they got. And then the three lesser goalkeepers, cheaper keepers, they averaged 3.3. So chances are your keeper would have got just over three on average. For the defenders, these are on five different pages. The more expensive players, assuming you had two of these, would have got you 8.4. The slightly cheaper defenders, 
Only two of those actually played. They'd have got you an average of three because there's only two you could have had of this played. And the cheaper defenders, they got an average of 14.6. Now, something important to say is every week I try to emphasise that the midfielders is where the most of the points seem to be this season at the moment. Then probably the forwards, then the defenders. Keepers, make a transfer if you need to. You've got nothing else to do. But you want to try and concentrate your effort and your money on the midfielders, then probably the forwards, then defenders, then goalkeepers. The reason I'm saying that is I'm aware of someone who's following this system. They had a transfer to Burn, and so they did a goalkeeper transfer, which is fine, but they would have actually been better off making a midfielder transfer. So you don't have to make midfielder transfers, but if you've got, should I do the midfielder? Should I do the goalkeeper? I'd suggest sort out the midfield first because the midfield is where the points is. So if we look at the midfielders, these are the expensive midfielders. If you had two of these, that was an average of 11 points. For the second page of midfielders, they got an average of 12, so they did quite well. And then the cheaper midfielders, mostly bench fodder there, they got an average of 5.2. For the forwards, assuming you had one of these, that was an average of 7.5. And then the cheap forwards got an average of 1.5. Now that was just whizzing through that. For those who haven't seen this before, you start by going over the scores, but then I talk in detail about the players that are in the system and what my suggestions are for what you may want to do. I think the global average score this week was 66. And from the people I checked that I know are following the system, some got a little bit higher, some a little bit lower. It, it depends. What happens some weeks is we all get higher than average. Occasionally we all do a bit worse than average, but it was pretty much of a muchness week this week, really. So the goalkeepers, looking at the goalkeepers in this system. Edison has got a very nice home fixture against Bournemouth. I wouldn't be buying him in, but if you've got him, he's obviously a very nice one to play. Pope, Anana, Neto. So Neto, we only introduced him two or three weeks ago. He's now injured. He's going to be out for a few weeks. We don't know how many weeks. But we're putting him out of our system now. Just get rid of him if you've got him. Now, don't take a minus four to get rid of him. He's okay just to be on your bench as long as you do have another playing keeper. But if you've got nothing else to do and you happen to have him, you should move him on. Uh, I may be the only one following this that actually had him, though. That's quite possible. And then fleck him. I've made Johnston green. I, I happen to buy Johnston, but he has some nice-ish fixtures coming up. Palace have been quite good defensively. Now, I would rather have Pope or Edison to Johnston, but Johnstone is a million cheaper. So taking that into consideration, I think Johnstone's a good buy. So if you have Neto and you can swap him for Johnston, that's worth doing. And then for the cheaper keepers, Pickford, Everton have, I think, had two clean sheets in the last three games recently. That's good. I've made Ariola green, not because he's an exceptionally good keeper, but he's only 4.3, which is pretty good. And he is playing and he does, he should be getting some points. Turner's cheaper 4.1, but if you could only afford one of those two as your second keeper, I'd go for Ariola. I mean, if you can afford both of them as your two main keepers, that's fine as well. And that gives you more money to spend elsewhere. So Trent Alexander-Arnold, he's white as in the card white. I've not made him green, but he is an excellent defender. He may well end up being the highest scoring defender in the system. But because of his price, I've kept him as not green. But if you're swimming in money, he's worth getting, absolutely worth getting. And if you've got him and you don't need to sell him, absolutely don't sell him. He's very, very good. Trippier is green because he's very good at getting bonus points. He's very good at getting assists. He got zero points last week. Probably won't get a clean sheet this week at home to Arsenal. But if you can stretch to 7 million, he's still a very, very good player to get. Not at the expense of making your midfield too weak, though. Make sure your midfield right first. Then when your midfield right, then you can think about your defence. And then two Arsenal defenders here, White and Saliba. If they are the same price, I think White is the better one. But White is half a million more. So I've made Saliba green because although this week's not great, Newcastle coming up, he's cheap-ish. So if you're having to make a transfer for a defender, Saliba's worth getting at only 5.2 and they have some nice fixtures coming up. Cash is still green for Aston Villa. He's a very attacking defender. Pedro Porro for Tottenham. I've got him as white. Perfectly good player. Slightly cheaper defenders now. Estupinan 
probably not going to play this week. Remote chance he will, but he has Sheffield United next week. He might be playing for that. So it may be if he plays a few minutes this week, then next week he's going to be green. So if you've got a stupid man, I'd suggest you don't sell him unless you can't get 11 players out. Anson for Palace, perfectly okay. A candy for Man City. Don't know if he's going to play or not. If he does, good chance of a clean sheet. If not, someone from your bench will come in. Gabriel, only 4.8 for Arsenal, but I think he's missed maybe three games so far this season through rotation. Might be more than three. So he is another half a million cheaper than Saliba, but Saliba's minutes are more assured than Gabriel's. Udogi missed last week through injury. We don't know if he's going to be right for this week or not. And then Burns only 4.7. And then the cheapest defenders, Colwell at 4.6. He could well be grey, I guess. He's quite cheap. Simicass at 4.6. Green, because Robertson's going to be out for several game weeks, it looks like. Simicass is absolutely worth getting. Possibly worth taking a minus four to get him in. But Simicass, because he's cheap and he's going to free up money for elsewhere in your team, and he's Liverpool, should get some clean sheets. And he takes some corners. So he's all right. Botman looks like he's going to be injured for a while now. So he's absolutely worth selling. So if you've got Botman, swap him for Simicast. Job done. Nice and easy. Pinnock at four and a half. I'm introducing the sales because one, we're losing Botman. And two, we lost a couple of cheap defenders last week. The sales is likely to play for a few weeks now. And he is only four million. So if Botman comes back a bit sooner than we expected... The sales can just sit on your bench and that frees up money for elsewhere. So don't take a hit to get in the sales. If you're on a wild card, he's okay to get. If you've got nothing else to do, he's okay to get. Regarding midfielders, Salah is still green. He's got a return every week apart from one week where he should have got a return, but the goal's rolled off for offside when it wasn't offside. Son, he's still very good, still worth having. Rashford, very disappointing. Saka's... Good player, but away to Newcastle this week. So he's worth getting next week if you've not got him this week. You don't have to get him at all, of course, but he's probably going to be green next week, but not this week. Odegaard, not as good as Saka at the moment this year. Fernandez, the best of the United attacking players, I'd say. But I've not made him green, even though his fixtures are great. Fulham, Luton, Everton. Man United are just all over the place this season at the moment. But if you've got him, no need to sell him, but... If you wanted to swap him for Saka, you could do. And then Madison, good solid player. Probably won't get as many points as Sun, but he is cheaper than Sun. Uh, slightly cheaper midfielders. Martinelli, away to Newcastle, so he's not green. Foden, a very nice home fixture this week against Bournemouth. He could get some decent points this week. But then after that, Chelsea, Liverpool, Tottenham, not so good. Bowen away to Brentford, but then he's got Forrest Burnley, Crystal Palace. He could be coming up for some very nice points. Sterling's got some difficult fixtures coming up. I've not made Sterling orange. If I had Sterling, I'd be tempted to move him on for sure if I had nothing else to do and get another midfielder because the midfield is where the points are, but he's all right. I know some people following the system like to keep hold of Sterling and that's fine. Diaby is still green, although their fixtures do get more difficult in a few weeks' time. But Sterling to Diaby if you did it this week might be worth doing. And Buemo, he's green because Brentford are coming up to their nicer fixtures soon and they're at home to West Ham this week. So if you don't buy him next week, if you don't buy him this week, next week he's probably not going to be green. Not until he got the Luton game, but he's fine to buy this week. And if you do buy him this week, you'll probably be playing him every week. And then Mitama away to Everton, then home to Sheffield United. And then away to Forest, he has some very nice fixtures. Cheaper midfielders, Ward Prowse, it doesn't matter that he's playing a bit more defensive now. He tends to get his points from the dead ball, which is the free kick, the penalty, sometimes a corner. So he's all right for 6.2. I've taken him off being green, but he's still a, I think he's still a perfectly right player, even though I know some other content creators are massively cooling down on him. Neto's injured. I did make him red, but I've been looking at the latest injury reports and it's unclear when he's going to be back. Is it beginning December, end of December? If it's beginning of December, he's only out for two or three weeks. Given that he's only 5.8 and when he comes back, he's going to be a good player still. I figure we don't have to sell him, but if you want to sell him, he's absolutely sellable, but he's not a must sell. 
Gibbs White is just a grey, as is Casemiro. Casemiro's orange now, sorry. He may well turn red soon, but I didn't want to say he's a must-sell yet because he's got Fulham, Luton and Everton. But as I said, United have been very disappointing. Palmer's a grey. He's only 5 million. He plays every week. He seems to be the penalty taker at the moment. He gives you money to spend elsewhere. He's a good buy. Nakamba, 4.4 if you need to save money. That's one of the places you can save money. Regarding the forwards in the system, Haaland is green. At home to Bournemouth, massively owned by everyone. He's then got three difficult game weeks. And then after that, he's got easier game weeks again, easier games. He's very, very highly owned. The best captain choice this week. If you're wildcarding this week, I don't suppose many people are, but if you are, he's worth making sure you've got him. I'd also recommend you don't sell him this week. If you wanted to sell him, the time to sell him was two or three weeks ago. If you've still got him now, you may as well keep hold of him. Watkins is still a very good buy. Jesus is injured. So Enketia came on last week for Jesus, who was injured, got a hat-trick. So lots of people are buying Enketia now. I've not put Enketia in the system because Jesus is currently looking like he's maybe going to miss three game weeks, maybe two, maybe three, maybe four. We don't know for sure. But to spend four points to get an Enketia when in another few games it's going to have to take him out again and one of those games is away to Newcastle I felt it wasn't worth introducing him if you have Jesus given he's 7.8 absolutely fine to sell by somebody else with that money but you don't have to sell him and when he comes back in a few game weeks time he's going to be worth having Wilson 7.8 I've not made him green because he can be a little bit injury prone but he has been very very good this season He's got excellent attacking returns. Darwin is green. The last few weeks he's been putting his chances away. Well, putting some of his chances away, but he is getting a lot of chances. And he's got Luton, Brentford and Fulham in three of the next four fixtures. So if you had Jesus and you don't have Darwin, sell Jesus, get Darwin. That's probably going to be a good move. Alvarez at 7.2. He's green because he's got an easy fixture this week. And then you probably just want to keep hold of him. So if you're wildcarding, you want Haaland, and then if you've got Darwin and or Alvarez, that's fine. You could get Watkins and a very cheap striker, that'd be fine as well. Hoyland, Man United has been very, very disappointing. He's bound to get some good scores at some point, but it's just not really working out. And then the cheaper forwards, Solanke's fine, Visser's fine. Morris is grey, 5.4. Yao Pedro, 5.3. Adibayo, 4.8. Archer, 4.5. So those last four are really to help you out with your finance. They'll often be on the bench. But Jao Pedro does seem to get minutes just about every game. He's the penalty taker, but he's not necessarily going to be on the pitch when a penalty is awarded. But any of these, any of the players I'm showing you that aren't red or orange are absolutely fine to have. Regarding the bench order for the goalkeepers... So what happens here, I'm going to show you the goalkeepers in order. The first keeper you see that you've got, I'm suggesting you put on your bench, which means your other keeper is the keeper you're playing. So if you have Turner, he's at home to Aston Villa. Villa do tend to score goals, so he's worth putting on the bench. If you don't have Turner, but you have Areola, I'm suggesting he's on your bench. If you have neither of those but Pickford, although he's at home to Brighton, Brighton have scored every game so far in the Premiership, and Everton do tend to let in one goal occasionally too. Um, I mean, Pickford's all right. And a lot of the goalkeepers are going to get three points this week, probably. So there's not much in it. Johnston for Palace, they're away to Burnley. Being away is not great, but it is Burnley. So I'm suggesting Johnston's probably a little bit of a better bet than Pickford this week. Onana's away to Fulham. United have been shocking, but he has a chance of a clean sheet, maybe more than the rest. And then Pope's at home to Arsenal. Newcastle can be very good, getting one of the very good keepers now. Flecken's at home to West Ham. More chance of a clean sheet than any other ones on here. Edison's got the best chance of a clean sheet this week. So they're the keepers. The first one you saw that you've got, I'm suggesting you put on your bench. With all the benching information, by the way, and the captains, it's just a suggestion. For those people that are like, just tell me what to do. Just follow these instructions exactly. If you just want a guide, that's fine. Just do whatever you want to do. So for the other players, the suggested benching order is as follows. The first player you see that you've got, I suggest goes in position three on your bench, the next one position two, the last one position one. 
So Adibayo for Luton, I'm suggesting he's on your bench. Then Nakamba. My glasses in here, they're not. I'm going to have to go forward a little bit to read these. Uh, Casemiro, Archer, Estupinan. I've got Estupinan down here because if he plays, there's a very good chance it's only going to be a few minutes at the end of the game or less than 60 at the beginning. So he's not going to get you a clean sheet anyway. Um, that's why I've got him so low here. Colwell for Chelsea, their way to Spurs. That's quite a battle. Spurs and Chelsea, they're not best friends. Solanke, Morris, Lascelles. Next row is Byrne, Gibbs White, Palmer, Jal Pedro, Pinnock, Anderson, Akanji, Hoyland, and Ward Prowse. Now we're getting on to the better players. So you have to if you have to bench one of the following ones, that just means you've got at least eleven good outfield players. Sterling, Bowen, Wister, Gabriel, Saliba, White, Martinelli, Udogi, and Odegaard. And then this last row, very unfortunate. Unfortunate if you have to bench one of these, but again, it just means you've got a very good squad. Cash, Mitama, Porro, Simicas, Trippier, Rashford, Diaby, Saka, Wilson. And if you've got a player I've not mentioned, it's because you're either playing them, because it's like Haaland, Son, Saka, etc. Oh, Saka's on here, sorry. Son or Haaland. Son, Haaland, Salah, there we go. <laughs> or it means they're injured and they're not playing anyway, or they're now out of the system. So that's a suggested bench order regarding captain. The standout captain this week is Haaland. If you have Haaland, I strongly recommend that you captain him. However, if you want to mix things up, we don't have Haaland. Salah is a very good choice as his son. If you don't want to captain one of those three or you can't captain one of those three, Embremo could be OK, as could Darwin, as could, as could Alvarez. If you can get one of these as your captain, one as your vice captain, that's very good. Personally, on a single game week, I would never choose captain, vice captain from the same team. So don't do Salah and Darwin as captain, vice captain. Don't do Haaland and Alvarez as captain, vice captain. Reason being, there's always a remote chance that any game could get called off because of weather or something else. And if you're wondering about the background, coming up to November the 5th, I simply combined fireworks with a soccer game soccer game sorry football game i have to call it soccer for the ai because it's american there we have it that's the instructions for game week 11 and i'm perfectly happy that some of you copy this verbatim some just watch it for ideas and some maybe just for the entertainment or see what i'm thinking thank you very much for watching hope you have a good game week 11 bye <laughs>